Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm joined by Leonard R., who's got a little bit of a map to show us. What exactly right. are we looking at? Uh, we are looking at um, a Minecraft representation of part of Manhattan in the 1850s. Uh, this is a, a historical map uh, that I did with uh, one of my coworkers at the New York Public Library. Now, I understand you work at the New York Public Library Labs. Uh, what does that mean? Um, well, it means uh, you get to work in the library from Ghostbusters, and you uh, design interesting uh, software and data uh, for getting people interested in the library and helping them read books and whatever else the library does. I don't know that you could possibly get more people more interested in attending the library than the film Ghostbusters, because, I mean, all the compressed air and the card stacks, then again, the kids don't have those card stacks, or the compressed air. I think that they all do that with CG now. But, uh, you know, so you got big shoes to fill. Yeah, well, uh, here's this is my first attempt at CG, I guess. Okay, okay, so you're, you're doing the Ghostbusters 2 thing here. Um, so, so what is this structure here? Is this, is this some, somehow haunted or frightening in some way? Um, it might be. This, is the, uh, this uh, used to be the New York Institution for the Education of the Deaf and Dumb, which is uh, not terms we would use nowadays, but uh, this is uh, uh, basically what I did with one of my coworkers at the library was uh, we digitized a map from 1860 and uh, turned it into a Minecraft world. Interesting. And so we've got one building footprint right here. And then I'm assuming these little brown paths here are uh, some sort of like chocolate rivers, or what would those represent? Uh, no, they didn't have chocolate rivers in New York City until the early 1900s. Uh, these are actually uh, sort of, uh, we believe they were dirt paths. Um, and if you, uh, if you sort of follow them, you'll see them go around in circles. Um, and apparently that was so people could uh, turn their horse and carriage around. Oh, that makes sense. I guess it's a lot harder to do a, a hard Yui, if you yeah. will, with a horse and carriage. So uh, we've got some structural footprints here. I'm guessing that these were some sort of shacks or shanties or, I don't know, something. Do we have any way of knowing what these places were? Um, in theory, yes. I actually don't know uh, because I didn't uh, I didn't work on the map part. I worked on the uh, converting the map to Minecraft part. Uh, my uh, coworker Paul might be able to give you more information. Unfortunately, he's not here. That's um, okay. Uh, you know, I find his absence appalling, but oh, we will deal with it. So you started off with a a paper map. Did you have to scan the map yourselves, or did you get it from some sort of New York Public Library digital archive? Uh, the library has actually scanned a lot of maps and made them freely available. Uh, so we didn't have to actually scan it. Uh, we picked a map that had uh, topographical information. It sort of had curvy lines showing uh, which parts of the map were 20 feet above sea level or the level of Hudson River, which parts of the map were 40 feet above, 60 feet above, and so on. Um, and that let, us, uh, turn th that let us turn that information into the 3D uh, Minecraft world that you see here. Excellent. So if folks wanted to you know, see what life was like in Manhattan uh, in the 1850s, they could just load up this map and run around and you know, ride horses and stuff? You can ride horses. There are horses. Uh, I think of it as more like... Uh, the experience of living on a map of Manhattan, because uh, as you can see, we don't we don't really know how tall any of the buildings were or or what they uh, what they looked like. We just sort of know what they looked like from the top. So all we see are the footprints. Um, but it does uh, give you the feel of sort of running around this space that doesn't exist anymore. It's all apartment buildings now. This seems like it's it's pretty big space, um, but you know, for uh, some sort of like multiplayer server or whatnot, where folks were just trying to find a, a good way to get started, this would mm -hmm. not be a crazy thing. Because I found one of the biggest pains on multiplayer servers is arguing about where the roads should go, so that people <laughs> don't put their houses in the middle of where the roads should go. And so this is just one of those things where it's like, boom, roads are done. Now we can just build awesome things. Yeah, and you have the you have the footprint 
circumference of the houses. So you just you just try to make it fit in that space. Oh, that's even lazier. I like it. Yeah, that, that's cool. So I noticed that there's some irregularities over here. Um, um, yes, this is actually this data was missing from the map because uh, we basically uh, rotated the map to point. Uh, north on the map to north in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is sort of where there there was no data, so you're, you're sort of just seeing weird uh, scan line artifacts. Um, but it's also a, a very adventurous part of the map, I guess. It sort of reminds me of the Far Lands. So we got a little bit of the Far Lands and a little bit of the near and dear to our heart Manhattan Lands, or, or Man Lands. There, there we go. That's, that's what we're going to call this now, the Man Lands oh. map. I, don't, I, I think that's sexist, Joe. Okay, um, you know, I I was referring... Is the man in Manhattan actually referring to gender, or...? No, I think it's it's a Native American uh, name. Yeah, so, I mean, like, that might be the word for, I, I don't know, like, uh, swamp or something. So maybe that's swamp thingish ist That's a hard thing to add ist to the end of. <laughs> swamp thingist. There we go. So um, I see that there's a lot more creeks in here and rivers and whatnot than you'd see in modern day Manhattan. Yeah, all those all those creeks are gone. Um, the river's still there. Well, yeah, the big river. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe I was using the word river a little bit too lightly. Um, yeah, these creeks. Uh, basically, Paul traced uh, creeks on the map, and uh, I turned them into flowing water on the Minecraft map. So that's really cool. Um, so you started with a scan of a paper map that was actually made in 1850, and you converted it to some sort of intermediary before you turned it into a Minecraft map, or did you go straight into Minecraft? Uh, there was an intermediary. Paul made basically two, uh, two images. Um, one of the images, it's a very dark color when the ground is low, like as it is with the river, and then it uh, moves to a very bright color as you go up the hill. So it's basically an elevation map. Interesting. Uh, in image form. And then the other one he did, it's sort of like a paint-by-numbers image, where he traced the roads, he traced the creek, he traced the, the river, uh, he traced the buildings, and each one of those is a different color. Um, and then I picked up that map, and with that map I decided what block goes on top, whether it's cobblestone for the paved roads or dirt for the dirt roads or grass for the fields. So uh, essentially you had an elevation map, which was some sort of image file. Uh, I think you might have said it was TIFFs in your email. Yeah, they're, they're, they're TIFFs because you got to um, basically you just want uh, pixel by pixel. You don't want any image compression or anything with a JPEG. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, is that TIFF conversion tool uh, for the elevation available in as part of your GitHub or anywhere that the viewers could find it? Yeah, we have um, we have the TIFFs on GitHub along with uh, two versions of this map. Um, the uh, Paul wrote instructions for um, using software to uh, sort of trace over um, trace over the elevation lines and trace over the features. Um, so you need to get a copy of the software and sort of duplicate his instructions if you wanted to do this on a, on a different map. Well, I was almost thinking something along the lines of if somebody has a tool that imports TIFFs based on brightness into elevation, mm -hmm. they could just go ahead and paint the whole map black and then with a variable transparency eraser change the elevation and just export it into Minecraft or MC Edit or something like that from there. Yeah, you could actually, you could absolutely do that sort of thing. Um, I would, I didn't have time to do a general tool, but I would like to write a general tool that will basically take a bunch of TIFFs and uh, turn it into a Minecraft world. And once you have that, then creating a Minecraft world is, uh, can be as easy as, uh, you know, drawing a bunch of images. So this is definitely a project to keep an eye on. Uh, are you guys planning on developing it further? Otherwise, my um, eyes will be wasted. I would like to develop it further, but I think it's going to probably be a spare time project. Uh, basically, we had a two-day hackathon to uh, work on work on this project, and so basically, what you see here is what we were able to do in two days, plus um, some more of my free time. 
Very cool. So, Leonard, uh, I understand that you, you created this topographic map. Now, if I wanted to play this in survival mode, is there, like, ores and stuff down here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I basically made two versions There's TNT of down here. Yeah, that's a little surprise for you, Joe. Wow, I'm glad <laughs> I was not, you know, not in creative mode. <laughs> um, oh, I'm even more glad now. This is this is a lot of falling underneath here. Yeah, I I, uh, I made two versions of this map. One of them is is the one you see here. It's sort of a survival challenge map. Um, so it's got all sorts of ores and resources buried underneath the surface. It's got pumpkins and sugar canes scattered around on top. Um, the other one is just uh, much more uh, plain. It's just the data that we got. Um, from the map converted into Minecraft. So there's no trees, there's no flowers. Um, all that stuff isn't on the map. It's just things that, that I put on to make it look a little more realistic and Minecraft-like. Um, and there's no ores buried in the ground. So that's the one you do if you just want to fly around and look at the map. Um, Very this is, cool. This is the one if you want to uh, place in survival. Well, I'm really impressed, and I hope folks give this a try. Like I said, if you're just hoping to you know, play around with some friends on a server, this could be a good starter map. Or if you're looking to do some sort of educational project on historical Manhattan, which you know, some of my viewers are probably teachers or people who like to argue with their teachers that they shouldn't have to do real work and should be allowed to play <laughs> Minecraft all the time. So, uh, you know, Or, hey, let's say that you have parents that you're like, hey, Dad. Joe Hill says that this is educational because it's Manhattan from a while ago. And, and what's more educational than that? I mean, you let me see Newsies. I don't know, maybe, if you're old enough. Um, but anyway, this has been a great time. Thank you so much, Leonard, for showing off something cool from the New York Public Library Labs. I'm definitely going to keep an eye on you on Twitter. You're at Leonard R. there. Yes. And the uh, NYPL Labs also has a Twitter account, which you guys can find in the comments below. Uh, cool guy, working for a cool group. If any of you guys are actual adult software developers and you want to be able to work on cool stuff like this, mingled with, you know, money more legitimate, uh, well, not that this is illegitimate. I mean, it was born at, you know, nine months after your parents got married. But, you know, uh, if you wanted to work on more uh, standard software as well, uh, they got all sorts of interest in projects all along the spectrum that they're working at at the New York Public Library Labs. So uh, take a look at, at their jobs page, too. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got a, a lot of different projects we're working on, um, none of which I think have anything to do with Minecraft. But uh, kids love Minecraft, so this was, a, this was an easy sell um, as a project. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do next, and, uh, you know, I might even try to get this together for some sort of multiplayer thing at some point, because the more I'm thinking about that multiplayer survival idea, the more I'm starting to fall in love with it. So uh, I might revisit this shortly. But anyway, uh, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee, joined by Leonard Richardson. Any final words, Leonard? Take care. And keep adventuring. <laughs>